join me once again here on Talk and Fight for another episode of Boxing News Today and its various incarnations on various social media platforms around the world. All right, let's take off uh, the episode beginning with, let's have a quick look here, Devin Haney. Devin Haney went to social media the other day, basically begging fans to purchase tickets uh, via pay-per-view for his fight against Ryan Garcia coming up at the Barclays Center. He said, basically, 18 days, Ryan goes down, go purchase tickets now. And he posted that on X, formerly uh, Twitter. And a uh, pretty weird attempt uh, at basically pleading with fans to go buy tickets. It's not a good look, quite frankly. Um, there have been some pretty successful uh, boxing matches that have been live streamed and have attracted quite a few audiences. And uh, we'll mention a few, uh, one in particular coming up. But let's have a quick question here. Is it Haney's lack of appeal that is dragging interest? You know, we know this last fight against Regis Progress uh, back in December was a disaster, reportedly selling only 50,000 pay-per-view buys with complimentary tickets given out for the uh, Chase Center venue itself. Given that Heaven, uh, Haney's fighting style is a combination of Shakur Stevenson and Tyson Fury, it's not that pretty to watch. So, uh, you know, did Ryan choose wrong? Ryan Garcia's got a huge fan base out there, and he's been he's talking it up, I must admit. But is anyone really, really interested? I mean, uh, it's, it's going to be a very good fight, I'm sure. Um, but does anybody really care? It seems not at this moment. Um, who is caring at the moment? Uh, fans of Canelo Alvarez. Uh, they're looking forward to him uh, beating our boy Jaime Munguia on May 4th. But more importantly, you're asking the question, who next? And uh, a quick scoot around the internet uh, might suggest uh, David Benavides. Um, you know, I mean, there's a bit of a weight um, disparity. But let's just say that can all get sorted out in time for a September matchup. David Benavides might be a great uh, pay-per-view uh, purchase uh, for fans around the world. That would be indeed a heck of a fight and probably one of Canelo's last fights, quite frankly. Canelo said the other day regarding Munguia's unbeaten record, that makes me excited because I want to show everybody what I am at this point. You know, that's with, with respect to his title defense against Munguia that's taking place, as I said, May 4th, my Odesinko weekend. He said that I feel very motivated, I feel excited, and I can't wait. I get in there and try and knock out my opponent, and this is not going to be an exception. I'm going to step in the ring with the mentality to try and finish the fight before the 12 rounds. So, there you go. Now, speaking of uh, knockouts, uh, that uh, well, there was a recent fight over in Britain. Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, a couple of heavyweights. They went at it, fought to a draw. But Ben Shalom over Boxer is, quite frankly, ecstatic at uh, the numbers he received for the uh, fight online. So he promoted the event uh, that took place at London's O2 Arena and attracted a peak audience of 746,000 boxing fans for the main event and averaged uh, throughout the uh, the undercard fights as well, which were, were quite exciting, uh, and another 40, uh, 438,000 people who tuned in uh, across the entire four-hour broadcast with a total reach of over 1.7 million. So that fight fans is something to brag about, impresses figures without a doubt, and uh, certainly gonna increase uh, bank accounts for not only uh, Ben Shalom and Boxer and a stable fighters, but also the fighters themselves that took place that probably had some kind of percentage um, uh, in their claws with respect to some pay-per-view monies. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, Sky Sports, which has been broadcasting fights uh, online over the past 10 years, uh, this is the fifth most watched boxing event on Sky. 
uh, behind uh, Eubanks, uh, Williams, Shields, the Marshall fight, uh, Caron Vargas fight, and the Taylor Catterall fight. Um, so, uh, obviously, uh, the best numbers for a heavyweight fight, quite frankly. So that can only bode well for some upcoming heavyweight fighters. The undercard, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of Albanians out there watching Florian Marku on the undercard, uh, despite his loss to Chris Congo. Uh, Vittle Riley, uh, he retained his English cruiserweight title against uh, Mikhail Lawal. And, of course, Ben Whitaker uh, dropped and then dominated Leon Willings, uh, winning that battle as well, uh, going undefeated in his uh, uh, move up the rankings. Good on Ben Whitaker on the undercard. And also Callum Simpson. Uh, scored a showreel knockout over Dulham Bambay and Alec Babic stopped Steve Robinson as well on that undercard. So some great fights on that particular card. Uh, drew some tremendous numbers. And Ben Shalom said this, what we witnessed on Sunday was one of the greatest British heavyweight fights of all time. Now remember, they fought to a draw. Uh, at Boxer, we are committed to growing the sport to new audiences and giving our fighters the biggest possible platform to perform. The numbers are incredible. It shows the huge potential and appetite for boxing in the UK and Ireland. We had an amazing start to the year, and we look forward to delivering more massive fights with unmissable action in 2024. So there you go. Over in the, the UK, they're doing well with boxing, uh, given the support they have uh, among the traditional media. The Sun, the Mirror, for example. Even The Guardian chimes in from time to time. Um Let's have a quick look at uh, Samson uh, Lukowitz and what he's saying with respect to uh, Sebastian Fandora after his victory, after his bloody victory over Tim Siu. Uh, anyway, uh, Lukowitz is the sole promoter of uh, the newly unified WBC WBO 154-pounder. He's the world champ in that division um, in those two uh, organizations. And he and, and Lukowitz wanted to clarify his position on the potential rematch uh fundura versus to you so he said uh we were also eager to make this fight uh that many of our uh, agreements were made uh, verbally uh there wasn't enough time uh but I, I wish to make it clear that team fundura will honor the agreement my world my word is equal uh, to a signed contract tim see you your rematch is ready when you are however the WBO might have something else to say with respect to what they had previously said uh, uh, with respect to the winner of this particular fight. Um, so Lukowitz said, you know, he, he doesn't mind the rematch. Uh, he might take the WBO mandatory um, or uh, Errol Spence. You know, he says, whatever the WBO says. So I, you know, had a quick look around and what did the uh, WBO president Paco Valcarcel comment. He said, um, you know, after having watched the fight, he goes, basically, here's this quote, congrats to the new unified WBO junior middleweight champion, Sebastian Fandora, who defeated former champion uh, Tim Tayu, uh, or Tim Zhu, in a great fight via split decision in Las Vegas. Okay, scorecards, 116, 112, Zhu. 116, 112, Fedora, 115, 113, Fandora, said the WBA, WBO president. Sorry. Uh, and uh, he added, uh, great fight in Vegas. Sue shows again that he's one of the best 154 pounders. Congrats to Tim and Sebastian Fandora on a tremendous WBO title bout in which Fandora received the judge's decision. Next week, the WBO will order negotiations for Fandora versus Terrence Crawford. So there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. That's who uh, Fandura will be looking at fighting. Um, Oscar De La Hoya has stepped into the firing line. Um, he posted a video uh, whereby he's seen laughing at Roly Romero's defeat to Isaac Pitbull Cruz over in Las Vegas. Uh, and moments after that was released, uh, indicating the Golden Boy boss in hysterics inexplicably. Quite frankly, after Cruz had stopped Romero, quite frankly, with a devastating blow, uh, and in the process, dropping his WBA 140 pound title. So, um, 
Mayweather promotion CEO Leonard Ellerby laid into De La Hoya after that, as well as co-promoter uh, Bernard Hopkins for kicking his fighter Romero while he was down. Said LB, wow, Raleigh is okay, uh, but what if he wasn't and something tragic happened? Classless behavior from two Hall of Fame fighters and promoters, especially immediately after a fight, in my opinion. Props again to Isaac Cruz and his team on terrific performance. But he added, when you talk shit, you have to eat humble pie. I talk big shit about Cruz getting clipped, but I was wrong. My guy gave it his all and lost. But more importantly, he's okay. It's part of the game. I talk shit about Hearn all the time, but to his credit, he would never do any shit like that. We all talk shit to build fights up, but again, they don't know if he was okay afterward. They don't know uh, anything. If anything checked out, everything was okay afterward, or if the young man uh, went to the hospital. I was surprised at uh, Bernard Hopkins, not at Oscar at all. Karma is a bitch. Uh, comments over Romero's post-fight interview caused concern, by the way, as he seemed quite disoriented when speaking directly after being clobbered. Um, yeah, it's absolutely disgusting, said a fan. Uh, for the fans to boo him, it's bullshit. Even if they interviewed a man who was clearly concussed, uh, when are we going to stop interviewing concussed and clearly dazed fighters? So, uh, do you want to know what uh, De La Hoya had to say? The former pound for pound king released another video later on for a second dose. He goes, Rollies, you dumbass, getting knocked out. Focus on your opponent instead of focusing on me, said De La Hoya. All other fighters learn from Rollies. Don't talk shit about promoters. There are only three of us in the world. So, Rolly's career might be on the downside due to the knockout to Javante Davis, followed by the controversial win over Ishmael Barrasso. But the pit bull knocked, uh, knocked him out. And you should see Romero switching from his usual heel stance if he wants to gain any sympathy for his current plight. So, there you go. Bit of uh, talk and fight for you. Uh, let's see what uh, Mike Tyson's up to. Mike Tyson uh, said this, with respect, because there's been a lot of chatter about whether this is going to be a professional fight against Jake Paul or an exhibition match, whether they're going to be wearing 16-ounce gloves or 10-ounce gloves, whether they're going to be fighting two-minute rounds or three-minute rounds. You know, this this type of uh, questioning has been asked uh, by the, by the fighters, uh, fans out there, and, and they want to know. They want to know, you know, leading up to this fight, um, you know, how, how could they possibly get a knockout with 16-ounce gloves? That would be an interesting equation. But it, in essence, what it does is it lessens the impact in the, in the fans' imaginations as uh, to so the, the outcome. I would like to see them fight with 10-ounce gloves. I would like to see them fight three-minute uh, rounds. I'd like this to be a professional fight uh, with judges uh, ringside. And I would like, you know, the Texas commission uh, to make a decision sooner rather than later. And of course, uh, Mike Tyson, a few years away from uh, his old age pension, quite frankly, uh, you know, he has to undergo certain tests before this fight as well. So assuming he even passes the medical testing, uh, yeah, he still wants to do this fight, but he had this to say. This is called an exhibition, but if you look up exhibition, you won't see any of the laws we're fighting under. This is a fight. I don't think he's faster than me. I've seen a YouTube video of him at age 16 doing weird dancing. That's not the guy I'm fighting. This is a guy who really wants to try and hurt me, which I'm accustomed to. And he's going to be clear, uh, greatly mistaken. Right now, I'm scared to death. As the fight gets closer, the less nervous I become. Because it's reality. And in reality, I'm invincible. So I hope, as I said, for all the things that I mentioned, it, it becomes a professional fight. And uh, we get to see those two clobber each other. Um, Lawrence Acoli. Uh, will challenge uh, Lucas Rosinski undefeated. 
uh, by the way, for the WBC Bridgeweight title on May 24th. It's been announced now. Akoli, he's 31 years old, will face uh, Rosinski, he's 38 years old, in Poland, as the Brit names, to bounce back from his first professional loss. Uh, in May, Akoli was outpointed by Chris Billum Smith to lose the WBO Cruiserweight title. And so he'll now bid to become a two division champion. He said, I'm excited to go to Poland and test myself yet again on away ground. Said Akoli, Rosinski is a good champion with an explosive style, but I'm going to do some serious damage. He's never seen power like mine. As I said, the unbeaten Rosinski added, I'm defending my world title in my own backyard, in my city, fighting against a former world champion. It's a fantastic fight for moments like these. I've trained hard my whole life. So uh, just so you know, um, Coley's 19 and 1, 14 knockouts, and Rosinski's uh, 15 and 0, 14 knockouts. Good stuff. I will end today's episode by giving you a quote from uh, Derek Chisora. Why? Because you might see a ton of headlines uh, saying, you know, information has been leaked about uh, who uh, Angie Joshua will be fighting next. And it comes courtesy of Derek Chisora, has absolutely no chance. So, anyway, here's it. Here goes the quote from the mirror over in the UK, a reputable source, of course. Uh, Queensbury Promotions are hosting a Wembley Stadium event later this year, and Chisora claims Joshua will be headlining the card. He will fight the winner of Daniel Dubois and Philip Hergovic in Wembley. Fuck it. I've got a big mouth. That's the plan. I'm going to be a sick, a little adventure for Turkey Al Al Sheikh to bring it back to London. And that's what he said on IFL TV, quoted in the mirror today. Just thought I'd let you all know what's going on <laughs> in the fun world of boxing. Talk and fight. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it very much. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And uh, we'll see you again here on TalkingFight.com uh, for more news, information, quotes, previews, recaps, uh, all the boxing news fit to print. Adios. <laughs>